Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Jason Mackey's First 10, the quick hit podcast that gets you ready for the day. A lot of stuff happening last night. Um, a lot of frustrating stuff happening, right? Penguins eliminated from postseason contention without playing a game. The Pirates pulled Jared Jones. It does not work out. Um, well, I had a, a lighter afternoon as I, I wrote a story about Justin Watson, a receiver from South Fayette, who just keeps winning Super Bowls with the Kansas City Chiefs. So let's dive into all of that. Going to be a lot on the Penguins and Pirates front. But first, want to remind you of our sponsor. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love the North Shore Tavern, but the interior is wall-to-wall pirates. Their appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone open every day. The North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. All right, so let's kick it off with a team that is the newsiest without even playing a game. The Pittsburgh Penguins will not make the playoffs for a second consecutive season. Major bummer. Um, you, for a multitude of reasons, I mean, you're wasting some of the best years. At least Sidney Crosby played hockey at a, a, a level that was very, very high. Evgeny Malkin found it later, obviously had his struggles. Um, but you look at the ages of these guys, of the, the players they're paying the most, and they're not getting any younger. And you're you're just not making good on those years. Um, you can look at overtime. You can look at the power play and and look at fail the failure to protect leads in the third period. And there's just so many areas you can circle and say, man, if they just would have done this, if they would have done that, would have been great. Um, but yeah, they're just too little, too late. Not able to get in, and maybe it'll be some realization. But I just I, I don't know if I. Yeah, it's. It's going to be a busy offseason. I, I think I'll, I'll say it that way. And I, I don't think it's probably going to be the change that people want. I understand the, you know, Mike Sullivan's got to go idea I, based on what Kyle Dubas has said publicly and people from Fenway Sports Group have said publicly. It certainly does not seem like that's going to happen. I think Mike Sullivan, if fired, would be a hockey coach again in about five minutes if he wanted to. His reputation is obviously incredible. I understand the other side of the argument, too, that if you don't make the playoffs for a certain amount of time, which has been a long time for the Penguins, what, six straight years, something like that, you go in another direction. Certainly. But if we look at this based on the signs that we're given by those in charge, not really expecting a Sullivan change. So, all right, what else happens here? You look at it, and by the way, at post-gazette.com, I'll, I'll promote uh, Matt Vensel and Andrew Destin's work. They do an excellent job of breaking down this stuff and others, but you know I, they're in agreement that Sullivan is probably going to stay. I think I don't see how you keep the coaching staff intact. I think the area where I would look, and this is not, in my opinion, an indictment of Todd Reardon. I think he's a very good coach, but the power play is not produced. I think you need fresh ideas. You need something there, right? It, like it strikes me as the definition of insanity, just doing the same thing over and over again. And so, okay, you make a change in the power play. How impactful is that going to be? Not sure. What's our next step? Um, you know, are you going to break up the core? I'm not sure. Um, I, I would hope that they don't go away from 87, 71. I mean, at this point, I think it's probably more likely or it makes more sense to extend Sid. He should finish his career in a Penguins uniform, not really saying anything that huge, but you know, I, Carlson, maybe if you consider him part of the core, I do think they're in a unique position with the salary cap and trying to create some space. If you have an offer for him, if the Ottawa thing is real, I'm not against it. By any stretch, I think they're somewhat limited in what they're able to do. And I think they have, I wrote this a couple of days ago, I think they have some major areas that they need to address. One of them, nice little pivot here, goaltender. What do you do? I don't know how you come back from the decision to go with Ned um, uh, the other night. I, I really don't. And, and these days all run together. I'm trying to remember who they played. Oh, Nashville. Uh, it came to me. But no, I such a big game and i feel like you're saying something fairly substantial by not going with tristan jari and then all of a sudden are we going to run it back where jari is their number one guy and and everything is fine i i don't know i i come down like this with the penguins that they need to do some stuff to get different to get younger to get more skilled in some areas to find better fits i'm not saying jari is that glaring of a problem but they're limited in what they can do you know riley smith okay I could entertain a trade for that. Jeff Carter is going to be UFA. He comes off the book books. Uh, Ricard Raquel, maybe the value is not terribly high. They could trade Lars Eller and get something for him. But I, why are you really making your, your team better? And I'm not sure. And 
So I don't know. I, I don't know where I come down on a Tristan Jari trade. I think that would be somewhat um, – I'd need to know what the external factors are, but I wouldn't be against it. But obviously a key question they're going to have to answer. They're going to have to answer a key question with Ned too. I, they, they should bring him back, right? But what's the number? Does that fit? All stuff to watch. Then Penguins offseason should be a busy one again. All right, topic two, Pirates. And, well, surprise, surprise, in my former life, I dealt with plenty of this. You have people upset over a decision that the Pirates made. I don't love it either. By the way, pulling Jared Jones after 59 pitches, 50 of which were strikes, arguably Jared Jones' best start so far. Um, I understand the idea of limiting what Jared Jones does. That's a good concept in theory. He matters so much to the Pirates. Paul Skeens matters so much to the Pirates. What I think the Pirates have been guilty of in the past is just being overly adherent to something like predetermined. And, and I think they did that again today where they said, we're going to shorten his start five innings, no wiggle room. Like what if Jared Jones's five innings consumed 79 pitches? That would have been a completely reasonable pitch count. You would have told me that that's okay. But because his five innings consumed 59 pitches, which is actually a good thing, they were less stress on his arm because of the nature of it. You're cruising. You're in a rhythm. You're not laboring. You're not behind in counts having to catch up. You're not having to snap off supreme breaking stuff or really pump a fastball by, by somebody. He had a really good outing and should be commended for it. But I just I, I don't like basing things on innings. Um, and the, that's everything that I gleaned from that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong not being there. I always get a little... If you're, if you're not in the room, if you're not there talking to people, but you know, what I, what I saw was that it was five innings and that, that was going to be shortened, not 60 pitches. If it was 60 pitches, whatever. But I mean, even that to me is a somewhat arbitrary number. I, I wouldn't be that worried about it. I would be that worried in the bigger picture, the grand scheme of things. Like if I say, Hey, look, we're not running Jared Jones out there. We're going to skip a start. This kid matters a lot to us. He's going to get his work in the bullpen. I think fans would understand that. The fact that you put him out there in a game and you take him out and then it blows up in your face. And again, unfortunately, this has happened with the Pirates quite a bit. Um, well, you know, it, it, it incites people because on one side, they're hearing winning is all that matters. We have to win, blah, blah, blah. And then they make a decision like that that is clearly um, – what, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like, you know, the opposite of, of trying to win. Now, their argument is they're prioritizing the long term health of Jared Jones's arm and the franchise and all that. I get that. That's a legitimate argument. But it's this gray area where these two things clash that ends up, you know, if it doesn't work out, it, it you know, makes people mad and could have worked out better if maybe they go a different direction in the second inning of Luis Ortiz, although I don't necessarily have an issue with the way Ortiz is pitched using him for two, he's rested, whatever. The bullpen should be able to, able to cover that. Probably the underlying factor is why, why they're not getting more offense. We can have that conversation as well. And um, they were putting up a whole bunch of runs, and all of a sudden lately the bats have gone kind of quiet. So not great. We'll see what they uh, they come up with here. Serious finale today in New York, off day, and then they come home. My final topic was the column that I wrote for today uh, on Justin Watson. And it's not controversial. It's not hot takes. It's not anything other than a local kid from South Fayette doing a really cool thing. Um, he had the uh, Super Bowl rings and, and a really neat thing at the uh, Friendship Village of South Hills in Upper St. Clair, which actually isn't too far from me, but it's a retirement community. They did a whole Kansas City Chiefs theme event. If you don't know who Justin Watson is, you should. Um, he's been on the Super Bowl winning team three out of the past four seasons. Uh, was inactive for one, but whatever. We're not counting that. He's been playing for the Chiefs and had a career best year this year. And um, just a, a local boy done good. South Fayette product went to Penn. Actually, remember covering Watson in South Fayette um, or at South Fayette a little bit. Just a really, really, really good kid. Uh, raised right. Talked to him about his grandma. And funny little anecdote too. Um, uh, being you know, covering the pirates and talking about the pirates. He was answering some questions in front of the room and somebody answered, asked one and he's like, I love your pirates hat. You know, I might be a chiefs fan, not a Steelers fan now, but I'll always be a pirates fan. And so I went up to him after and he's like, man, I read your stuff all the time. And so that, that was kind of cool um, to give, you know, know that you're, you're given an NFL player um, his fix of, of baseball in the area. So um, he's very encouraged by the start. I, I'm guessing Justin Watson didn't love, Jerry Jones being pulled either, but such is life. 
in the baseball world. In any case, check that out. It's just a fun, fun story about a, a kid doing a really neat thing. Um, we don't have to be mad all the time. I promise. There was plenty to be mad about elsewhere. Um, a lot to unpack again today. Uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow with another video. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can get this podcast and all the other content from our Post Gazette writers. And uh, yeah, talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.